Gavin. So, what can you remember, um, Joe, when you left, when you first met Gavin? Um, what year it was? I, I mean, to be honest, uh, there's a there's a saying about Welsh fellas that Welsh fellas, the only good Welsh fellas, the ones that go kind of, you know. No, but uh, can you remember what fucking year it was? <laughs> That's what I'm fucking saying, man. That's what you're getting to, you That's what I'm fucking saying. Like, we start with a fucking, you know, there's a little Elizabeth Taylor's quote saying the only good Welshman the fuck is the gold to set bridge and never come back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she also said, you know, Welsh, you know, men generally, we don't hunt in packs, we are like lone sharks, yeah? Yeah. There's no fucking Welsh bars, is there? <laughs> in, not like, there's no, no in no. Scottish no. ways either, because there's yeah. not any Welsh bars, and yeah. that's the thing. No. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know, Gary, I mean, we kind of started off quite badly, actually, because he thought I was some poncy fucking posh twat from Merthyr Tidville. Mm -hmm. Merthyr's posh, my brother. Right? And I thought he was... So was there a bit of rivalry going on there between the two towns? Well, there were certainly yeah. two fucking alpha males looking yeah. to go, you know. Yeah. And basically, you know, he had no respect for me because I was doing, like, country western techno. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had no respect for him because he was pretending to be a dirty squatter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as it worked out, you know, kind of... Uh, but yeah, we circled each other with a sort of kind of uh, you know, trepidation and cynicism. So but as a fucking geezer, and as I got to know him, and I realised, and uh, 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 an all joking aside, you know, you know, he, he run a very cool crew of soldiers. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and his reputation spoke for itself. I'm sure you're familiar, if your uh, viewers are familiar with that, was one of the strongest illusions known to man. And I found myself in, uh, I think it was a Sunrise Festival. Hey, Actually, it was with you, right? There. This is Steve from right. Alabama 3 talking about Gary Diaz. Yes, I thought I would smoke. What was that? About sunrise when you took some. Uh, yeah, we saw. No, no, when we saw it, we went to, to 2000 DS. What's, no, what's Alabama 3? Yeah. What is Alabama 3? Is that a drug, is it? Or? Yeah, it's a planet. <laughs> but we had it was actually in 2000 DS we played in some <laughs> fucking old tent. Yeah. When the afternoon we crawled in like lizards or planets, I crawled. <laughs> yeah. And I remember yeah, Gary, came, yeah, Gary came up to me and goes, get the fuck off, because he could get the fuck off my stage and I'm lying in a field position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what, and I looked at you, but it was a sanctuary <laughs> because we went, we went, we found, uh, I know this trucking trip, we crawled into the fucking 2000 DS fucking. He guarded his territory. He dragged me, get off my fucking stage. Yeah, he fucking guarded twat. it. I was going, oh, listen, Matt, we're both Welsh, you were him. And he gently carried me beside the stage, but we lay there for half an hour till we calmed down. Well, yeah. he did yeah. as well, while we were there. And he was sweet as fuck of us, yeah. But he was like, you know, he was, yeah. a, he was, a, he was a kind of, uh, you know. Gary guarded the stage like as if the Romans were in there. Yeah. He guarded the stage like as if the Romans were coming over the fucking but, valley. Uh, I mean, he took, he took no prisoners. In no, context. he wanted to and, do it properly, didn't he? And I, I had a really, really good relationship. I, I was like, you know, he, he very much perceived us as a sellout yeah. fucking, uh, you know, country master techno band, which was kind but of... But do you think, do you think he reacted that way, or do you think that was just like a front? Or? Nah, Not it was a front, front, it was just him, because he was from a different valley from yeah. the Arena Wales. Yeah, 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 yeah. Came to a Wales team. At the same time, I had a kind of, you know, long discussion with Gary about going, well, yeah, free party squad, it's all well and good, bro. We've got to put fucking bread and butter on your table. Yeah. And uh, it was really interesting. How we watching him develop as an artist to yeah. like organise stuff and yeah, we've got some dollars in here. Mm. Yeah. While still maintaining a kind of a, yeah. a warmth and integrity based in his underground. Well and also about putting over with a with a fucking audience the size of someone like you, you need to put the message over you. Know, after Gary's demise is that, you know, having seen Dead Silence where he was at in terms of I'm not saying a crossover, but certainly yeah, taking things the, forward. the times now, you know, need you know, Something what different. Gary was representing yeah. was very important. He was banned on the zeitgeist. Yeah. And you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. He maybe took for a higher fucking squat pie and then yeah. sell out for you because yeah. you're going to be a famous, that you're a top motherfucker. Yeah. You know? yeah. And he was nervous of that. Fair play to him. He's very resistant to that. No, kind of he was scared. I, I tell Bobby, he was scared of that. He oh, he hated it. I tried like it a long time. That man. was his, his major fear, was, was because of how long we'd done it. Yeah, and we couldn't turn on it, you know. Not even if he did, he wanted to anyway. But he carried, he carried that rock and roll on the road, and that yeah. was the way he carried it. Yeah, man, we, we, That's the way. We, that's why I left in the end, because I couldn't. I wanted to feed my family properly, but with music. Do you know what I mean?
great majority yeah. of people would just see it as a natural progression. Like yeah, said, but um, when you've lived with people the way we, it was a yeah. way of life for us, yeah. so we yeah. couldn't do it. It was very important. Yeah. Really I think important. the whole thing yeah. can be, it, it's be, you know, can, it's, it's become a bit of a limitation on people, really, that whole selling out, you know, you can't you play outside the spot party or a travel yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but DS was, the 2000 DS was different. 2000 DS never could have, because it was well, on that. that. On the other so you could have as, as a, you could have as a never entity, like he was with Dead Silence or whatever. But as mm-hmm. two band, yes, we were the hardcore underground squat band, so you could never make that. The importance of, yeah. of Gary's legacy is the fact that what he motivated and got together, yeah. and we have a responsibility of yeah. any of us who were kind of been touched by his kind of fucking crazy mania. Fucking, yeah, motivation you know, is the word. You know, you are going to have to take that on because it's very inspiring. Already, you can see a dip because he, his energy was so fucking mad. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It might have yeah. been, to some people, it might have been somebody moaning at him, or it might have been somebody fucking, but it was just his energy to inspire fucking parties to happen constantly, or over all in years, right, right from fucking day one, right up until now. How can you drive yourself to do something for nothing mm-hmm. and keep doing it? More, you know, guys are asking the one to return into some kind of like icon. Yeah, but, but, but yeah. also... He's yeah. more in a very much, and that's what I said before, he's yeah. very much people that call it faith in the bankers, mm-hmm. where what? The lifestyle that Gary espoused and that you know, mm-hmm. reputation forward have been a long-term alternative, independent, autonomous kind of you know uh, scenario. You know, which you know, which is the fucking you know where young people are going to be at now. If if more people now are squatting, or doing on sound system, put festivals on, and setting up on record labels or in music, then you know I think and Gary's at a party now. You know, Gary yeah. and Traveller sites in 2000 yes, can't play outside squat parties and travel. You know. Gary Diaz was never, you know, I met him in 1992 on the Traveller's side, but I was like a funky acid house raver selling ecstasy to the fucking travellers in East Berlin, whatever. But he was never, ever judgmental towards me. No, we weren't tied down. We played in like, uh, what was heaven? Heaven, the gay club, we played in there, we'd play anywhere, we could. Yeah, you know what I mean? What about this Paul was a young lad come from the valleys, you know, young punk rocker, moving out of his little village and in the middle of fucking nowhere in Wales. He was a cunt. He was fucking a nightmare. Gary was a nightmare. My, my other brother will tell you more than me, but he used to go to gigs, we used to go to the top rank, top rank in Cardiff, right? They'd walk out of there, mate, right? Cool. And skinheads, yeah, yeah, skinheads, there'd be gangs of skinheads waiting, right? They'd walk through them, and they'd be walking away, and every fucking time Gary would turn around, run like fuck, dive head first into them, and just have a... If he'd got through them without having a scrap, he'd run back for a scrap. Yeah, yeah. Just to have, just to let him know that he didn't give a fuck. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And was he good at me old head back? He used to die, always head first, die Me first, see, that's what me yeah. and Gary got on, man. We used the same weapons oh, all mate, old, like, My big brother can tell me more about shit from them days. But all I used to remember, I remember him coming home the one day with a fucking imprint of a Dr. Martin <laughs> on his forehead <laughs> in a fucking bruise. And he, uh, he had his passport photo taken, but he hit shot the uh, fucking grease after that. But he had an imprint of a fucking mine where they'd fucking done him. And that's how it was in them days, wasn't it? Staring, all, staring at the Rue Boys and all that. You go yeah. to a club and it'd be skins, punks, yeah. fucking tails. Who are you? Which side yeah. you on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which got off him and he'd seen his crew work, you know, and, you know, I was saying, bumping into him over the years, but I very much got a strong sense of, uh, you know, people around him, his posse, like I said before, his soldiers, was he was quite caring him because he'd, he'd paid his dues, he'd been a fucking hooligan and a lunatic, you know, he had that respect amongst yeah. the uh, well, it's growing up. very facilitated yeah. in terms of the crew around it's him. Growing and up. I popped up with that, blah, 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 he kept his wisdom. You know, the of looking after people, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which was very, you know, came across very strong, well, yeah. particularly in the last few years. Yeah, which kind of portrayed it. That was when he was young, when he was fucking like a 16, 17, 18 year old, when he was like fighting in the streets of the skins. But when he took me on the road, and when we were growing up, when I was growing up, I was 10 years younger, he took me on the road when I was 14, I left school and went off with him. Do you know what I mean? My mum fucking hated him for it for the rest of his life, like, but I, you know. But we used to roll into fucking, like, East Berlin, places like that, in a bus full of hippies, in fucking neo-Nazi zones, man. Yeah. Like, but real, like, when we were in first in Dresden and places like that, we're talking about heavy skinhead areas. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we used to turn up there as a punk mad band, Open the doors of our bus, loads of dogs, loads of fucking mad crusties fall out. And we used to just we didn't do them, we didn't do them with the music, we'd do them with what we fucking were about. And that was it. Yeah, all of it to put together, basically. But you know, it was just so many people sitting there. Yeah. This, but we rolled hard, we rolled fucking hard. We rolled all around America, man. Three months around America we rolled like that. Yeah. Me, Gary, there's five of us in a fucking we hired we we toured America for three months like that, exactly the same. 
rolling into places, just fucking doing what we were slagged off by all the magazines in America for being fucking, like, the Anarchist magazine, Maximum Rock and Roll, all these magazines slagged us off because we were fucking too wild, basically. Yeah. We were just, you know, in, well, a, in, in America, yeah, in America they like to pigeonhole you. They like to say you're yeah. a fucking, you're an anarchist or you're something. Because we were fucking just mad, Gigi Allen. Yeah. Well, when we, when we got to San Francisco, we stayed with Gigi Allen's yeah. guitarist. Yeah, that's, that's really, and we had a gig in this anarchist bookshop, right? Just in case anybody doesn't know who Gigi Allen. Our attitude was, was <coughs> a gig was just basically whatever he made it. So mm. he could he could fucking start, it was a good, his band behind him were a real good punk band. Mm. But say he should jump into the crowd and someone pushed him, he might punch him in the face. Basically, it was just a, a fucking whatever happened happens. But it's part of the gig. The yeah, he, part he, of yeah, yeah the exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's you know a lot, chaos, of people, yeah. a lot of people didn't get his thing. And maybe sometimes I wouldn't. I might turn up at his gig and not get it. And you know. But That's a point of good rock and roll. Yeah. Good, good rock and roll in 2000. Yes. No, you know, but, you know, it's about disturbance. You disturb yeah. people's heads. You, you roll yeah, it into. Going, what the fuck was that? Yeah. About? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hip hop of his day, isn't it? It's yeah. a hip hop. You roll into an area, sending the message. Yeah. This is how we roll, and we're bringing. A, but the difference with us was we took a buses, so we took our whole area with us, not just a band. Mm. Our fucking way of life. Dogs, fucking. Kids, I'm people like the spiral drive and all, like followed our route. That's yeah. what I'm saying, after the Criminal Justice Act, after yeah. the Criminal Justice Act, which had laws, yeah. and after yeah. Castle Morton, yeah. Yeah. you see exactly. a lot of We were already abroad when Castle Morton happened, yeah. 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 and the spirals left that whole boy and hit the fucking boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we fucking raped and pillaged fucking Europe, didn't we? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Siphoned our way, robbed our way, you know. Basically, you know, we, were, we got to Amsterdam, we did a gig, half the band left. So me and Gary then had to fucking smuggle, <laughs> take, take whatever we took from Amsterdam to mm. Spain mm. to survive, find the guitarists there, and that's how we, we toured for the next 10 years, was by, like, just Thievery picking, picking exactly. Yeah, yeah, we'll see the pants shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the fucking education of borders was what kept us alive. Because yeah. the music didn't. Yeah. It was what we knew we could take to the next place that would make money. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. And that was, you know, and you can't fault him for that because he was fucking special for that. You know what I mean?